Okay, well, this is my first video. It's not a review. Um, I know I know what's in here. I know how it's made. I know the quality. But I just I just wanted to to say before I open this, I have fought purchasing one of these for years and years and years. I never liked the idea of it. I thought the best part of Drum Workshop, which is what we're talking about, uh, I thought the best part, one of the best parts of Drum Workshop was the fact that their their bass drums were, we call them virgin, just they're not drilled. There's no hardware going through the shell to support the tom mounts. So I really, that appealed to me early on. I've been playing DW since 1990, gosh, 94, 95. The first music store I worked in in Oxnard, California, was just up the freeway from Drum Workshop, and we were we were big fans. So there were a couple of years in there where I played a couple real high-end Yamaha kits. I loved Yamaha. If I couldn't play DW, I'd play Yamaha. I've been blessed enough to play DW for all this time. Uh, it is now 2023. We are going to open this bad boy, and we're going to talk about what it is. I'll give you my thoughts on it, and then I'm going to install it. I build custom snares, so. I, I know how to drill a shell. I would consider myself not expert, but but professional. So it, this will be professionally mounted, in my opinion. We'll uh, we'll just get to it. Let me get this bad boy open. Let's talk about the things that you're gonna need versus the things you're not gonna need. This is really important. Fully charged. Please make sure it's not gonna slow down or lag or anything. You're gonna need a. I think it's a. 764 and a 732nd drill bit. This is primarily for the pilot hole because you don't want to put something like this through wood blindly, so to speak. This is super important. I prefer the blue tape because I can get it in two inch pieces. I can get this in two inch also, but this happens to be what I have. It's just painter's tape. This is really expensive painter's tape. That's the other reason I don't really want to use it, but this is what I have. So this is for after when you're going to mount the actual hardware after you've drilled everything out. This is super important. So you're obviously gonna need a measure tape. I actually use a measure tape. This is actually an old seamstress measure tape. And the reason I like this is number one, it's extremely accurate because even on measure tapes, like the, the hardware tapes that you use for construction, the end of that tape uh, moves. The little, uh, the little claw at the end moves. And this doesn't move, it's perfect in every way. So not to mention, there's no claw on this. It's, it's made of, of material, it's soft, so you're not gonna scratch your drum shell. You do have to measure on the drum shell and you don't wanna scratch it, that's that. Now, moving on to stuff you're not gonna need. You do not need this, I know that sounds weird. You don't need this, you don't need that, and you don't need the actual mount, which slides into the pedestal, which slides into the plate. What you do need is these five little gems here. The four sets, um, washers, uh, lock washers and screws, and then you need this rubber plate. This rubber plate can actually be taped down to the shell once you get your measurements done, and you can use these holes in the rubber as a guide. So it's perfect. That's what you need. That's what you need. That's what you don't need. Let's get cracking. All right, this is where you start getting nervous if you've never done it before. I almost recommend you not start on something like this. Retail on these things are $2,000 and up. Not only are they expensive, the wait time to replace one of these if, if something does go wrong is just astronomical. So you're basically going to take this bad boy and you're going to essentially mount it right there. A little bit closer. I think it's probably, according to the paper, it's probably a little bit more like that. So anyway, obviously I haven't measured anything. This is just eyeballing it, but uh, it doesn't look bad. It's gonna be really cool. It will still be a version bass drum. Nothing other than a couple of holes, no bigger than this, which are about the size of the holes that are used to put the lugs on. Um, I mean, the biggest hole on these things is Probably this guy, this this dude's like, it's like a quarter inch, if not bigger. So anyway, you're really not putting huge holes in this, so it's not that big a deal. But, and and I, I've seen people buy plugs. If, if you do get this installed and you don't like it, I've seen people take, well, in this case, Blue Sparkle, but I've seen people take little bits of material and create little covers. If you don't like it, pull it off, put some covers on. No one's gonna know but you unless they get right up on it. If somebody's that close to your drum set, they better be playing it with your permission. Anyway, here we go. 
another couple things I forgot to mention for crying out loud, please don't forget this. This, this is really important. This is your directions. And if you know how to read them, you're going to want this. If you don't know how to read these, you should not be doing this job. This is the other thing I kind of forgot to mention. I, I feel like I subconsciously didn't bring it up because I don't recommend it for a lot of people. This is a drum key that goes into a drill. Please be careful if you're using it. Taking the tension rods out of the receivers is one thing. When you put the tension rods back into the receiver, if you over tighten one of these, you could really cause some problems, number one. Number two, if you start to cross thread, you're not gonna know it until it's way too late. And then you're gonna be buying a new receiver and a new tension rod. And because it's Drum Workshop, they're probably not that cheap. And they're probably hard to get. Just a little side note. Sorry, I forgot that. We are taped up. Um, I feel like I over taped this a little bit. I just used extra tape. I don't know why I just did. Anyway, the top is taped up. It's smooth. It's flat. We also taped the inside where the drill bits are going to be coming through because that's a good way to help prevent. It's not a guarantee, but it'll definitely cut down the chances of a blowout in the wood. And then I also put a little towel in here just to catch the, the sawdust because you don't want to have to clean your whole drum all over again. You're going to have to clean certain areas anyway, so you might as well not have to clean extra. Let's go. All right, so this is, uh, this is actually centered. I make snare drums, so I actually made this turntable here, and it has made this project kind of a dream. Um, anyway, so this is centered. I know it's not centered on the tape, but that's because the tape's not centered. So this this gasket i have measured front to back based on the schematic there and then i measured from here down to a certain spot on this leg measured from here down to a certain spot on the other leg this is exactly centered and exactly where it's supposed to go so i went inside here and i made little marks with the sharpie um, on those gasket holes we are gonna get to drilling so i'm probably because i don't have a, a phone stand i'll probably get one of those at some point um, i'm just gonna drill this very carefully uh, i'll let you know how it went when we're done you probably won't see the drilling process but um it'll it'll just be a minute so let me get that done and then i'll show you how it turned out okay that went pretty well so as you can see we've got a mixture of maple and finished ply coming out of there and um, underneath, we had no blowouts, which was which was awesome. Went through pretty clear. And now we're going to get this mounted up, and then I'm going to show you. wanted to take the tape off and show you guys um, the difference tape can make. So the holes are super clean up here. You're not going to see these holes anyway, either on top or inside. You're not going to see them. But knowing that you did it right and that you didn't crack anything um, goes a long way. So... Holes are super clean underneath, and yeah. So I hope you don't mind. I went ahead and put it all back together and wanted to show you the finished result. So this looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with it. It actually kind of reflects the blue sparkle, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so um, let me put this back in here. I just, I did a test fit just to make sure it was. So this is actually how this goes. Tighten that dude down there, and then you suddenly no longer have to take extremely heavy hardware stands with you. I play one rack tom up, and I play a floor tom. So this can actually be a symbol if you want, or if you can find a cowbell or something with a hole that freaking big, because these these things are these are like I think they're 12 millimeter. They're they're humongous. DW has the largest ones because they stand up to anything you can throw at them. Anyway. Um, yeah, so there you have it. Before all the haters start hating on putting a bass drum mount on a drum workshop bass drum, if it wasn't something that should or could be done, they wouldn't make it, first of all. Uh, secondly, some it's just a personal preference. Some guys prefer this uh, older style and some guys don't. The point is you can go with this older style and not affect the bass drum. There's four holes in this drum that were not there before, but I don't think that does a whole lot to it since there's already 28, 30 something holes in it already. What's four more? All right, man, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's my first one. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing stuff like this a lot and have a great day. Take care of each other and God bless.